Take a minute now to stop. Put your hands together. Pat your feet if you'd work. To sing along with the St. John Baptist Church Youth Choir as we give him the highest praise.
Good morning, St. John Baptist Church. This is Deacon Virgil Wallace. It's Sunday, November the 6th, 2022. Be thankful, be grateful, and be blessed. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, it's Ephesians 520. Virtual Sunday School Youth and Adult Classes. Join us via Zoom on your computer or your cell phone. Four virtual Sunday school classes every Sunday at 9 a.m. Two adult classes, one couples class, and one youth class. Friday, November the 11th is Veterans Day. We honor you, we salute you, we thank you. Celebrating American Education Week. American Education Week will be celebrated November the 14th through the 19th. During this week, we set aside time to celebrate contributors past and present to the field of education. On Sunday, November the 13th, the Tutorial Education Committee will celebrate all of our past and present educators. Thank you. This is from Connie B. Epps. She's the co-chairman, Tutorial Education Committee. Dear St. John, on behalf of the Brooks family, and the Israel Brooks Foundation. We extend our heartfelt appreciation to the love and support you have given us each year for the last 15 years in memory of Deacon Israel Brooks Jr. The golf tournament was a huge success and we could not have done it without you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you plans to give you hope and a future. Jeremiah 29, 11. Thank you to my dear Four Score Club. Thank you so much for remembering my birthday with a lovely card and generous cash gift. That was very thoughtful and kind of you. May God abundantly bless each one of you. Love, Carolyn Laws. 2022. Baptist Women's Day of Prayer, Monday, November the 7th, 2022, at 6.30 p.m. And this will be at St. Andrew's Baptist Church, 230 Bush River Road, Columbia, South Carolina. St. John Baptist Church Bible Study, Zoom and Facebook Live, every Wednesday, 6 p.m. Visit our website, www.stjohnbaptistchurch1900.com for the Zoom information. Corporate prayer. Prayer is putting yourself in the hands of God. Join us every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Call our prayer line, 803-573-0268. Happy birthday for the month of November. Four score members. Evelyn Corbett, Carl Rogers, Ruby Shumpert. Best wishes to all those who are celebrating a birthday in this month. A season of giving thanks. Weekly Bible verse. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks to God, the Father, through Him. Colossians 3, 17. Thank you, St. John. Remember, November the 7th is Election Day. Everyone, make sure you vote. Have a blessed week.
Good morning, St. John. Oh, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great king above all the earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalmist says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastures. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving. And into his courts with praise. Let us be thankful unto him and bless his name. Why? Because the Lord is good. Woke us up this morning. He's good. Start us on another day's journey. He's good. Close us in our right mind. He's good. Our hearts beating right on time. The Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And the truth endures to all generations. Amen. St. John, we are blessed this morning. We uh, take, uh, received two members into our fellowship this morning. We want to thank God for the deacons, the deaconesses, and the uh, uh, new members ministry. Let's praise God for them. Praise God for Minister Hall and Brother Esau joining us this morning on this communion Sunday morning, first Sunday in November. The Lord is good, and we will revisit Titus this morning. We have one more point in that verse 4 that talks about a much-needed prayer. We talked about a much-needed prayer for grace, a much-needed prayer for mercy, and now the Lord has given us a much-needed prayer for peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Minister Patterson is coming at this time to give us the invocation. Good morning, St. John. You all look good this morning. I just want to make that known. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you once again just to say thank you. Thank you for blessing us and keeping us yet another 30 days so that we can assemble once again on yet another Communion Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, and we now ask for the forgiveness of our sins, and we've come short of your glory, but we thank God for your love, your grace, your mercy, and your peace. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. We ask now that you would come in and join us, that you would continue to lead us and guide us, continue to bless this pastor, continue to bless this church, continue to just be in the midst of your people as only you can. Now, as we end this invocation, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for your joy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. And all the saints of God said, amen. 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 And amen. Amen. Thank you, Minister Patterson. We want to uh, let us continue to worship and praise our God. How many know that giving is a part of worship? Giving is a part of worship. Amen. So you can give at any time during the worship service because giving is a part of worship. Those of you on social media, if you uh, love to give, you can give through our website, through our PayPal app or our Givelify app. If you're on social media and you have a smartphone, pull up your uh, Givelify app, type in St. John Baptist Church, and give as given unto the Lord. Those of you who are here, you can give through the envelope system, through your smartphone, or through the debit processing machine out in the vestibule. Let us praise our God because he's worthy of our praise. Our choir is coming at this time. Let us lift him up because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Come on and clap your hands, St. John. Hallelujah. The Lord is in this place. We come to thank him and to praise his name.
blessed this morning? Anybody blessed in this place? So we tell the Lord, thank you for blessing us. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Clap your hands and praise him. Are you still holding on? Are you still holding on? No, I never. Never let go of his hand. Never let go of his hand. Never let go of his hand. Never, 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 never let go. of our praise he is worthy of our praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same he's worthy of our praise I'm still holding on to his hand to his hands and I'll never ever let go of his hands amen and he's holding me and I'm holding him. And he says, if any man is in my hands, no man is able to pluck him out. Let's give him praise today. He's worthy, worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. Thank you. Amen. Uh, Sister Reigns, amen. She's been holding on for 60 years today, right? Your birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> Hallelujah. 60 years. God is good and worthy of our praise. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. We certainly give thanks and praises to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank Him because I'm saved and sanctified at the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Still have a mind to keep pressing in troubled times like these. We do honor uh, all of our deacons, trustees, deaconesses, uh, First Lady, Sister Graham, ministers, wives, ministers, uh, the ushers, choirs, musicians, members, saints, Media ministry and friends, we greet you at this hour in the name of Jesus on this first Sunday in November, a communion Sunday, and there is much need for prayer. And so we're going to ask that you would turn back with us into Titus chapter 1, verse 4, as Paul encourages Titus at the beginning, saying to Titus, a true son in our common faith. That's an encouragement, an affirmation, a confirmation. And then there's the prayer. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. He's praying this prayer, asking God to give grace, mercy, and peace to Titus and to us from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to use for a theme or a thought. These brief moments we have together, a much-needed prayer for peace. A much-needed prayer for peace. Saints, as we delve back into this letter of Paul to Titus and to us, I wanted to, want to continue our conversation about a much-needed prayer that Paul prays for Titus and us in Titus chapter 1, verse 4. Paul says to Titus, while I'm confirming your faith, while I'm encouraging you in the faith, I'm also praying that this much-needed prayer for you to have grace and mercy and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. And so far, we know we need the grace of God to run this race. So far, we also know we need mercy to suit our case. But then finally, Paul is praying that 
we receive peace for whatever we face. Peace for whatever we face. Yes, this is, in this life, we, have, we, we are faced with so many negative and opposing views and oppositions and obstacles and adversaries. And Paul knows that Titus is going to need peace to lead this uh, process of establishing elders and leaders in every church in Crete. Peace in dealing with the Cretans. Peace in dealing with Christian Cretans in the church. Just think about your own life, saints. You have life pressures, life problems, life issues, life struggles that you are faced with and you need peace. You're faced with church problems and family problems and financial problems and political problems, people problems that push you into praying for faith and praying for peace. Would you agree with me that this is a much needed prayer for peace to sustain you in the midst of whatever situation you face? We see why Paul is praying this much needed prayer for peace for Titus and us because he knows that Titus is facing uh, the Cretans. He knows what Titus is facing in Crete. He knows the culture that Titus has to deal with in Crete. Titus face, uh, uh, faces this sinful and dirty and, and deceitful culture in Crete. He's facing this conniving and cutthroat and lazy and, and, and greedy and gluttonous culture in Crete. And in the midst of this crazy and corrupt culture, Titus has to train leaders to be holy, righteous, upright, faithful, and trustworthy. In fact, Paul says, this is not what I made up. This is not hearsay. Even their own prophet said this about them. Look at it there in Titus chapter 1, verses 12 and 13, where he said, one of them, a prophet of their own, said, Cretans are always liars, evil beasts, and lazy gluttons. This testimony is true. Therefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may what? Be transformed by faith, that they may be uh, uh, made whole and made healthy by faith. This is the kind of people and culture Titus has to deal with and minister to. And Paul says, you need me to pray for you to have peace in every situation you face. That's not to mention all the stuff that you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. The pressure and problems of the home. Pressure and problems on the job. Pressure and problems in the street. Pressure and problems in marriage and in ministry. Think about the church trying to be the church in a messed up, miserable, and crazy world. We have, a, we have to be the church in a crooked and corrupt culture. We have to be the church in the midst of some dangerous, deadly, destitute, and discouraging times. And we need the peace of God as we share Christ's gospel to the battered and the bruised, to the, to the hurting and the hated, to the haunted and the hateful. We need to have peace as we share the peace of God to the last, the least, the lost, and the left out. And so Paul said, before you get started, I'm praying for you. If there is anything the church needs today to survive and thrive in this deadly world, it is prayer. We must get back to prayer. If there's anything you and I need as we face the pressures and problems of life, it is the prayer for peace. Paul said, I'm praying for you. I know you're faithful, but I'm praying for you. I know you have faith to move mountains, but I'm praying for you. How many know there's power in prayer? Glory be to God. How many know that you can, you can make it with prayer? Hallelujah. 
Paul says, I'm praying for you to succeed in this ministry. I'm praying for you to win in this fight. I'm praying for you to stand firm in your assignment. Glory be to God. And so I'm praying for you to have peace in whatever you face in life and ministry. Peace in the midst of your storm. Peace in the midst of home problems. Peace on your job. Peace in marriage and in ministry. Does anybody need peace today? Does anybody know that peace is a person? Do you realize that peace is a person? Glory be to God. And his name is Jesus. It's right there in Isaiah, 60, uh, Isaiah 9 and 6 where it says, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The very last clause, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. He is our peace. And so peace is a person by the name of Jesus. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14 says, Paul says, Jesus himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall that separates us. Somebody say peace is a person. And his name is Jesus. And so Paul is praying this prayer for you to have peace. Jesus, because he knows that peace can, he knows what peace can do in the life of every believer. And can I tell you what peace why you need peace? Can I tell you what peace can do in your life? Number one, you need, we need this much needed prayer for peace because peace comes as a physician specialist to heal and make you whole. Simply put, peace is a healer. He's a healer. He's a healer. Yeah, he's a healer. He's a healer. Peace is a healer. When you are faced with brokenness, when you're faced with sickness and disease and COVID and cancer, guess what? Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom, the Lord God, our peace, comes to make you whole. The Lord, and we see this physician specialist, this healer in the great benediction and blessing in Numbers chapter 6, verse 26. Look at it there. Look at one clause of that in Numbers as, as Moses uh, 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 speaks this blessing upon the people. He says that the Lord, Jehovah Shalom, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Health. Healing. Wholeness, prosperity. I stopped by to tell you today that you don't have to stay broken. You don't have to stay broken. And I know we have broken homes and broken humans. We have broken men and broken women, broken boys, broken girls, broken members, broken marriages. But you don't have to stay broken. We have Broken hearts and broken spirits, broken limbs and broken lives, broken families and broken fellowships. But God, the peace of God in Christ can fix you today. Why? Because he is a physician specialist that can heal you and make you whole. Somebody just say peace. That's on one side. Now somebody say wholeness. That's the Hebrew definition for shalom. Shalom is the Hebrew word for peace. And it means peace and wholeness. Jesus comes, Jesus gives you the kind of peace that can put you back together again. that can restore your soul, that can make you whole. That's the kind of peace we need in this broken and fallen world in which we live. 
But then there is another meaning of the word peace in the New Testament. And the peace that Jesus gives to every believer is his sustaining presence. In the midst of life's conflicts and confusions. I mean, storms can be, winds and, 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 and hurricanes can be swirling all around you. Confusion and chaos can be swirling all around you, but the presence of Jesus can keep you calm in the midst of your storms. That's what peace means. It means the presence, the sustaining presence of Jesus in the midst of sufferings and sorrows, in the midst of troubles and trials. It is Christ who sustains you in the midst of your storms, your struggles, your troubles, and your trials. Yes, you can, he can what? He can mend you. He can heal you. He can put you back together again. Yes, Jesus is our peace, our shalom, our healer in this broken, and guess what he comes to do? He comes to break down barriers that seeks to separate and divide us. He breaks down the barriers of racism, sexism, classism. He comes to break down the barriers that seeks to be, to, to, that keeps us broken as a society and as individuals. Yes, he is our shalom. He is our peace. He is our healer. He can heal our racial ills. Our, he can heal our community ills. He can heal our uh, social and moral ills. And as physician specialists, Jesus, our peace, will not allow disease to defeat you. I mean, we live in a fallen world. We live in a sin-cursed world. We live in a world where what? It's rampant with sickness and disease and plagues and viruses and, and pestilence and so on and so forth. But Jesus will not allow those evil things to defeat you. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. How do you know this? Because he is a healer. He will not allow. He, in other words, he cured the woman who had an issue of blood for 12 long years. There was a man who was blind from birth, and Jesus gave him his sight. There was a woman who was bent over for 18 years, and Jesus straightened her up. There was a boy who was knocked down with epileptic seizures, and Jesus picked him up. There was a man who could not walk, a man who could not talk. There was a man who could not hear, and Jesus fixed them all. Jesus will not allow disease to defeat them. But well, wait a minute. You say, well, that's in the Bible. That's in the old, that, that's, that's in ancient times. Well, he's just as real a day as he was on yesterday. Isn't that what Hebrews said? He's the same God today, yesterday, and forever. So no matter how broken you are today, Jesus can fix you. Jesus can pick you up. Jesus can turn you around. Jesus can put you back together again. Somebody say, thank God for Jesus. Thank God for our peace, our shalom, our physician specialist who heals all our diseases. All means all. Yes, he is our peace. He is our shalom. He is our healer. How many know that he's a doctor that never lost a patient? And guess what? He's in the room right now. He's in the room right now. You might have came in here with an ailment. And affliction. You might have came in here with some kind of disease, but guess what? He's in the room. I dare you to 
act out like the woman with an issue of blood. Just reach out and grab him. Just reach out and grab him. Just reach out and touch. He's healing your broken heart right now. He's healing the battered right now. He's healing the bruised right now. He's healing the sin sick soul right now. There's nothing too hard for God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. You got to speak this thing. You got to shout this thing out. You got to speak it. By his stripes, I am healed. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. He's in the room. Hallelujah. This is a much needed prayer for peace. Number two, because peace comes as a protective shield to guard your heart and your mind. He's not only a physician specialist, he's now a protective shield. I mean, he's guarding my heart right now with the breastplate of righteousness. He's guarding my mind right now with the helmet of salvation. It's on you right now. But to be honest with you, Satan, the prince of the power of the air, is out to strike fear in your heart. He's out to take your mind. That's when you have to pray that much needed prayer for peace. And say like Dr. Hines, Lord, keep my mind. That's what you got to pray. You got to pray, Lord, keep my mind. Lord, guard my heart. Saints, if you are not surrounded and protected by peace, your heart can be troubled and paralyzed by fear. And guess what? You can lose your mind. But the good news is you don't have to be troubled. You don't have to be stressed or fearful or afraid because God has sent us Christ, our peace, as a protective shield to guard your heart and your mind. Glory be to God. Can I tell you where to find it? The good news is right there. The good news is we have power of prayer and the power of peace on the inside. Turn with us, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. It's right there, saints. It's in the word. Look what Paul says. Be anxious for nothing. Let me give you a better translation. Don't worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. That's one part of the good news. But here it is. And the peace of God, which, what, surpasses all understanding, will do what? Guard. Guard. Guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. Somebody say protective shield. This Christ, our peace, will guard your heart from anxiety and trouble. He'll guard your mind from confusion and worry. He'll guard your heart and your mind from fear, doubt, and unbelief where you don't have to open up the door to sickness or disease. You just heard what I said, right? Fear, doubt, unbelief opens the door. You don't have to have it. Just have faith. Don't drop your guards. Don't open the door to sickness and disease. No, you can what? Have faith. Keep, the hell, keep on that shield of faith. Somebody say protective shield. And guess what? No matter how many times troubles and trials and tribulation try to penetrate that protective shield, it won't work. That's what Isaiah said. That's what the songwriter said. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. It won't work. 
It won't work. It can't penetrate Christ in you. It cannot penetrate the Christ in you, the peace in you. It shall not penetrate this protective shield. Listen, saints, all the trouble in this life is enough to break your spirit. All the chaos and confusion is enough to take your mind. All the heartache and, and heartbreak and pain and disappointment and discouragement is enough to break your heart. All the violence and the crime is enough to take your mind. All the mental abuse and physical abuse and relationship problems, all the fussing, feuding, and falling out is enough to trouble your heart, break your spirit, and take your mind. But, somebody say but. But Jesus, our peace, knows how to guard our hearts, guard our mind. He knows how to sustain us, preserve us, keep us, deliver us. Somebody ought to say, thank you, Jesus. Thank God for peace. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for our protective shield. Who knows how to keep our hearts and our minds, keep our hearts from fear, our minds from being all cracked up. I agree with the songwriter who says, this is how I fight my battle. This is how I fight my battle. It may look like I'm surrounded by confusion, doubt, unbelief, craziness. But guess what? I'm really surrounded by you, you, you. It may look like I'm surrounded by craziness, doubt, fear, troubles, trials, tribulation, but really I'm surrounded by, I'm surrounded by, I'm surrounded by you. Who are you surrounded by? Jesus! Glory be to God. That's what Elisha was trying to tell his, his, uh, his aide when they were saying, man, the enemy's all around us, but he said, no, 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 we got more we got more heavenly host angels. You don't see them, but they're up there. They're right there. They're protecting us. And he said, open your eyes. He said, I'm looking and I don't see them. He said, I'll open your eyes again. There were thousands and thousands and thousands of those what, ministering angels ready to fight for his people. You may not see it, but it's there. You may not see them, but they're there. Somebody ought to say yes. He fights my battles. He surrounds me as with a shield. Last point, and I'm going to let you go. And that is, peace comes as a power source to help you overcome the world. Yes, you and I will be confronted with troubles, trials, and tribulations. But Christ, our peace, gives us peace power to overcome troubles of this world. How do you know that, preacher? Because Jesus told us, John 16, these things have I spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Wait a minute, in him. We're in him. Trouble may be all around us, but we're in him. Glory be to God, that in me you may have peace, in the world you may have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. You have peace in knowing that if Jesus overcame trials of this world, if Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave, then you can overcome too. Why? Because Jesus is your peace. Jesus is your power source. Jesus can help you overcome the world. Jesus is saying, while you're going through your troubles, you can rest in me. 
while you're going through your trials, you can trust in me. You can live. You can move. You can thrive. You can overcome in me. This is the peace I give. Trust in me. Rest in me. In the world, you will have tribulations. But you can overcome it. How? In me. He didn't say you wouldn't have troubles. He didn't say you wouldn't have trials. He didn't say you wouldn't have problems. But he did say you can overcome them in me. Somebody say I'm a world overcomer. Is there anybody up in here who ever overcame a storm? Have you ever overcome troubles in your life? Have you ever overcome being bullied or humiliated or betrayed? Have you ever overcome death of a loved one or a nasty divorce? Have you ever overcome hunger and homelessness? Then you know for a fact the only reason you're still here is because of Jesus. Jesus, our peace. Can I get a witness? You should have lost your mind, but Jesus. You should have been dead, sleeping in your grave, but Jesus. You should have been defeated a long time ago, but Jesus. You should have been down and out, but Jesus, your peace gave you power to overcome. Tell your neighbor, I'm a world overcomer. Whether you know it or not, you're among a whole lot of overcomers. You in good company this morning. You in good company this morning. You're among overcomers. The mere fact that you're here today, you're an overcomer. Guess what? You overcame another week. You overcame another day. You overcame another mistake. You overcame another failed task. You overcame another domestic dispute. You overcame another violent attack. You overcame another argument. You overcame another beat down. You overcame another put down. How you did it? By the peace of God. By the grace of God. Somebody say yes. Aren't you glad? Jesus, that's our peace. Aren't you glad Jesus overcame the world? That Jesus overcame death, hell, and the grave? Somebody say yes. They took him from the garden. They took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They tried him all night long. They put a cross on his shoulders, led him up Calvary's hill. They hanged him high. They stretched him wide. They pierced him in his side. Out came blood and water. Somebody cried out, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. He hung, he bled, he died. Didn't he die? He died for your sins. He died for my sins, but I'm so glad no devil in hell could keep him in the grave. One day went by, two days went by, but early, 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 before the robin could say tweet and leap, early, early, Sunday morning, he got up with all power, all power in his hand. Somebody say yes, say yes. Holy power, uplifting power, healing power, delivering power, saving power, all power, overcoming power, all power, surviving power, thriving power, all power in his hand. Somebody say yes. Say yes. Say yes. A much needed prayer for peace. Thank God mama prayed for me. Thank God daddy prayed for me. Thank God pastor and members 
praying for me because they knew what I was going to go through and thank God for the peace of God. Every one of you up in here has been through something. But thank God for the physician specialist. Thank God for the shield, protective shield. Thank God for the, 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 the source of power that is given us in Christ Jesus. Stand to your feet. There may be somebody from the, out of the ark of safety. No God on your side, no heaven in your view. There may be somebody who's going through right now. This message is for you. God says you don't have to go through any longer. This message is for you. God says you can have the peace of God in Christ Jesus. You don't have to live in confusion and fear and doubt and unbelief any longer. You don't have to live in bondage or defeated. You can be victorious. All you have to do is come to the person of peace. Jesus Christ. He is our peace. He will give you peace. He will reside in you to protect your heart and your mind in him. He will give you power to overcome. So as the choir sings the invitational hymn, don't let this moment pass you by. Perhaps Jesus, you want to come and Jesus. give your life to the Lord. Accept Jesus, him as your Lord and Savior. All you have to do is come. Repent of your Jesus, sins. Believe in your heart. Confess Jesus, with your mouth that God has raised him from the dead, Jesus, 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 you shall be saved. Jesus, or perhaps Jesus, Jesus, you desire to join this church, St. John, Jesus, Jesus, because we are in love with Jesus. Will you come right now? Will you come? Will you come? If you step out, one of St. John will step out with you. Will you come right now? Don't let this moment pass you by. You came here for a purpose. You came here on a divine assignment and God is calling you out. God is calling you out, telling you to come, join, be a part of the family of God, the kingdom of God, the body of Christ. Just step out. Just step out. Just step out. Just step out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Will you come today? Yes. Jesus. Perhaps you want to stand in the gap for somebody else. There may be somebody in your family, in your circle, who needs healing, who needs deliverance, who needs to be set free. Just step out. Step out. Stand in the gap for them today as we go into prayer. Will you come? 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 Yes, 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 yes. Hallelujah. Will there be another? As we stand across, we're going to pray for you. We're going to pray for those whom you came to stand in the gap for. Will you come? Will you come? Will you come? He's already here. His presence is in this place. He's already here. He's here. He's ready to heal. He's ready to set free. He's ready to deliver. He's ready to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Come, come. Come, come, come. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for the healing right now. I thank you for the deliverance. I thank you for the salvation. I thank you for the peace. I thank you for the sustaining power of your presence. I thank you, God. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Let us bow our heads. You know what you need from God. God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we could ever ask, think, or even imagine. Hallelujah. There's a wave going across right now, speaking 
delivering, setting free, hallelujah, lifting burdens, lifting uh, 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 anxiety and stress and fear and doubt, lifting. There's a wave of peace, a wave of peace, a wave of peace, anointing your life right now, anointing your heart, your soul, your spirit right now, hallelujah. You no longer have to bear that guilt, bear that burden, bear that weight, bear that pressure. It is gone. It is gone. It is gone. It is gone. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. And Hallelujah. For you will find rest for your soul. Hallelujah. We thank God for rest for our souls. 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 Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, powerful presence. Thank you, anointing of God. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you. Lord, we come in the mighty name of Jesus. Stum are standing around this altar for one thing and some are standing around this altar for another but we know you have 10,000 blessings in your hand just to satisfy us all and we thank you right now for being a doctor in our sick room somebody standing in the gap for somebody else somebody standing right now who needs you for a doctor let your blood cover from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet we know there's power in your blood we know there's healing in your blood we know there's deliverance in your blood let your blood cover and cast out the affliction that's plaguing their bodies right now Satan the Lord rebuke you Satan the Lord rebuke you the Lord cursed that cancer from its root right now. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. You can no longer stay in that person's life. You can no longer keep that person bound or afflicted. God, we thank you for setting them free. You were wounded for their transgressions. You were bruised for their iniquities. The chastisement of your peace was upon them and by your stripes. They are healed, healed of cancer, healed of COVID, healed of high blood, healed of heart disease, healed of this diabetes, healed of mental illness, healed in the mighty name of Jesus. They are healed, healed of alcoholism and drug addiction, healed in the name of Jesus. You're taking away the taste you're taking away the desire. You're Thank taking you away Lord. the, 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 the desire for that alcohol, that drug. We thank you right now that you're binding that addicting spirit right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you that you're lifting burdens and you're destroying yokes. We thank you that you're giving joy and joy and joy and joy and joy in the name of Jesus. We thank you for saving. We thank you for setting the captives free. And God, you're doing just like you did that woman, that Syrophoenician woman whose daughter was homesick. And Lord, we speak right now, whoever's homesick, when they get back home, they will be healed. We're speaking right now, God, just like you spoke to the centurion whose servant was homesick and you said he said speak the word only and my servant shall be healed well we're speaking the word of healing and lord when they get home their child their husband their wives their spouse hallelujah will be healed in the name of jesus we thank you thank you for healing thank you for salvation for saving the lost thank you for opening doors to that new job, that new promotion, that new opportunity, and shutting the door of poverty, disappointment, and discouragement. You can open doors that no man can shut, and you can shut doors that no man can open. And God, we just want to tell you, thank you. Why don't you say thank you? Why don't you say thank you, Jesus? 
Jesus. 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 In Jesus' name, we pray, we count it done, we claim the victory. And we say amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us prepare our hearts for communion. My dear brothers and sisters, thank God for his presence, his power. Thank God for allowing us to come together, have communion together. We I hope and pray that you have a communion packet. We ask that you will pull uh, your responsive reading out. We're going to read the first. You're going to read the second, and we'll read the, sec the third all together. Coming from Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 28. And it says, And as they were eating... Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. All together, for this is the, my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We come to you, God, because we know that you're the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We come thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, and your peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Thank you for these elements on this table in our hands. We ask now that you would change these elements from its natural use to its spiritual use. Allow this bread to become your body, this fruit of the vine to become your blood. That as we partake of your body and your blood, yet you do show forth your burial, your resurrection, your death, your burial, and your resurrection until you come again. As we partake of your body, whatever ailment or affliction in our body, we know that you will purify and cleanse. As we drink of your blood, we know that you were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes we are healed. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. We count it done, and we claim the victory, and we say amen, amen, and amen. We're going to ask at this time that we open to the bread. Jesus, on the same night in which, has betrayed, in which he was betrayed, took bread, blessed bread, and broke the bread, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. And in the same manner, he took the cup, it says, this is a new covenant in my blood, which was shed for many for the remission, forgiveness of sins. Drink ye all of it. Hallelujah. We praise God. Hallelujah. 
Glory be to God. Saints, we're going to transition into our closing part of our worship. And while we're prepared for the closing, we have a family ministry unit. Hold on a second. We want to first of all thank you uh, all for a uh, wonderful HBCU Sunday on last uh, Sunday. Uh, we raised, uh, we, re we reached our goal, saints. We reached our goal. <laughs> Hallelujah. We actually raised $10,131 for HBCU Sunday. Let's, let's give it up. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. Amen, amen. We want to also ask that we continue to pray for the McCoy family. Sister Megan McCoy's funeral was here on yesterday. Also, saints, we thank God for the HBCU committee. Did a marvelous job of uh, hospitality on last Sunday and, of course, with the food trucks. Let's give it up for our HBCU committee. <laughs> amen. On next Sunday, we will celebrate uh, American Education Week and Veterans Day. So uh, well, we're going to celebrate our veterans on next Sunday morning and our educators. So come on next Sunday and let us praise God for what he has done through our educators, those who are in the school system, and our veterans who protect us uh, on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. Also, those of you who, are, who desire to go to the Urban League uh, Banquet, I have six tickets left. I want those of you who desire to go, please see me after church. Six tickets left for Tuesday night's Urban League. Amen? Amen. Uh, this month, the Bailey Brown Green Hangleton Family Ministry Unit are greeters. And so we're going to have Sister Susan uh, Anderson to give us uh, the names of our honored guests before we leave today. Good morning, Pastor Graham congregation. We'd like to welcome our visitors for today. Today we have Jazzy OG. She is from Charleston, South Carolina. She is a guest of Haddith Landvine. She's a member of Second Provider Baptist Church in North Augusta, South Carolina. Would you please stand? She's upstairs. Okay. She's already standing. All right. We also have Mr. and Mrs. Barry and Tony Hagen. They are from Columbia, South Carolina, members of Ebenezer Baptist Church, Atlanta, Georgia. Oh, well, yes. Pastor Graham, these Hallelujah. are our visitors. Hallelujah. You're certainly welcome, both of you, uh, to our St. John Baptist Church. We're a church hung on welcome hinges. The doors are hung on welcome hinges. We hope that your stay here has been a blessing and that you will come back and join us again. We praise God for my great friend, Pastor Warnock, is at Ebenezer. Just tell him I said hello when you get back. We praise God for you. Thank you so much for being here and coming. Thank God for our dear sister. And of course, uh, as you leave today, our uh, hospitality team wants to greet you at the door and uh, wants to share with you some more information about our church. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, as we stand, uh, we ask uh, you to give at any time during the service, and so now we're going to have Reverend Cheatham close us out with the offertory prayer, and I will give you the benediction. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we're thankful today for the gifts that you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, that we have given back to you a portion of what you have given to us. Now, Lord, we ask that you would bless it. Make it be used for the building of your kingdom. And then, Lord, the seed that we have planted in this ministry, we ask that you would 
bless it so that it might come back to us. You said to cast your bread upon the water and in a few days we shall receive it. You also said that bring ye all the tithes and the offerings to the storehouse and see if I won't pour you out a blessing that you shall not have room enough to receive it. And Lord, we trust in your word. So Lord, we ask that you would bless the sower, bless the seed, bless this church that sits on this hill, showing men and women, boys and girls, that there is reality in serving a true and a living God. Bless us now, Jesus. And we pray this prayer this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen. Thank you, Reverend Cheatham. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, shalom, health, healing, wholeness, prosperity, success, long life with satisfaction and salvation until we meet again. And we all say amen, amen, and amen. Our choir is going to sing. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. Go in peace.